Welcome to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm Darren Marlar, and uh, coming up today, can you be arrested for driving under the influence if your car is uh, if your car engine isn't even on? Well, apparently, yeah, you can in Indiana. I'll have uh, details on that coming up. If you hate to exercise, well, you can blame it on your jeans, and I'm not talking about those denim ones. Our moment of duh today has two guys wanting to celebrate Independence Day, and they end up celebrating a moment of duh instead. We've got Question Impossible, you've got your birthday wrap-up. Hey, would you uh, would your dog rather receive a treat or praise from you? Well, I'll give you the answer, and also admit it. You like doing those mind-numbing tasks at work, don't you? Don't ya? Well, I'll tell you why you do in uh, a little bit later on in the show. And in a few minutes, G.I. Joe and the World Wide Web – they surf their way into today's weird holidays. I'm Darren Marlar, and join me! We're all having a Tuesday, and you're invited! Let's do it, y'all! It's about time! The Darren Marlar Radio Show! I'm listening to you. I need a little excitement! Get more Marlar! On Facebook. Okay, admit it. You like doing those mind-numbing tasks at work, right? You know, those those really boring tasks that take no mental skills whatsoever. You like doing those, right? Yes, you do. You may not admit it, but you do. And I'll, I'll explain why here in just a bit. I'm Darren Marlar. If you'd like to, uh, well, like me, poke me, tweet me, follow me, uh, whatever you want to do on social media, you can find it all at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Let's take a look at today's weird, wacky, strange, zany, odd, bizarre, quirky, unusual holidays. Today is Tuesday, August 1st. We actually made it to a new month. Congratulations! This is G.I. Joe Day. It was on this day in 1964 that Hasbro Toys introduced G.I. Joe, an 11 and a half inch action figure that sold for $4. The doll was inspired by the 1945 Robert Mitchum movie, The Story of G.I. Joe. And they were realistic dolls, too. As they aged, their hair began to fall out. At least mine did. Did you have one like that? That the little fuzzy hair? The older that, the more you played with that thing, the more hair he lost. I mean, <laughs> he he looked like he was aging right there in front of you. Uh, today is World Wide Web Day. It marks the birth of the World Wide Web in August of 1990 at the European la excuse, at the uh, Europe Laboratory for Particle Physics in Switzerland. Uh, so wait a minute, Al Gore wasn't involved with this, really? Uh, anyway, no, Tim Bern Berners Lee and Robert Kyle, uh, Kylie, the uh, two guys named Tim and, and Robert, neither one of them named Al Gore. All right, we'll just put it that way. They developed a prototype web browser and they introduced HTML, which we've all seen, but very few of us actually understand what it means. It means hypertext markup language. So that uh, they uh, uh, so they kicked that off at like 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and then at 2:06 that same afternoon, the very first sending of spam. Uh, Simplify Your Life Week begins today, which computers and the internet were supposed to do for us. Obviously, that did not happen. No need getting upset about that though, because August, all this month, it is Happiness Happens Month, sponsored by the Secret Society of Happy People in Copal, Texas. All right, well, how secret can you be, though? I mean, if you tell everybody what city your secret society is in, what it's called, and you're publicly sponsoring an entire month telling people to be happy. You know what? I'm happy. Hooray. What do you think your dog would rather have from you? A, uh, a treat or a little bit of praise from you? Well, dog expert Gregory Burns, he's going to give us the details in less time than you could fetch a stick at, coming up here in just a bit. First, it's, uh, it's, uh, today's question impossible. Your question, how many words in the English language contain the vowels A, E, I, O, U in that order? Again, how many words in the English language contain the vowels A, E, I, O, U in that proper order? I'll give you the, the, uh, the answer to that coming up here a little bit later on, or you can, if you're just impatient, you can Google it and find out for yourself if you want to cheat. I'm Darren Marlar. Here's a, a dirty little secret about mind-numbing, boring tasks that we do at work. We won't, we won't admit it, but we actually love those. 
Completing unchallenging tasks it gives us such a sense of accomplishment that this kind of work actually makes us happy, according to researchers from the University of California, Irvine, and Microsoft Research. With rote work, you get a feeling of accomplishment, but you've not really exerted a lot of mental activity, says study leader Gloria Mark. She told the Wall Street Journal this, and it gives you a feeling of fulfillment, but there's no frustration or stress. So we like doing those mind-numbing things, which is probably why I feel so good every day after the show. This is getting boring. Hi, I'm Darren Marlar, and if you've missed any part of today's show, well, you can catch up at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, when your dog does her series of three tricks, you know, rolls over, shakes, speaks, and she does it all in perfect succession just like you trained her to do, well, do you think she'd rather have a doggy treat or some praise from you? Well, given the choice, many dogs actually prefer praise over food, according to researchers from Emory University in Atlanta. Dogs were at the center of the most famous experiments of classical conditioning conducted by Ivan Pavlov in the early 1900s. You've probably heard of Pavlov's dogs. Well, Pavlov showed that if dogs are trained to associate a particular stimulus with food, that the animals salivate in the mere presence of that stimulus in anticipation of the food. Well, one theory about dogs is that they are primarily Pavlonian machines. They just want food, and their owners are simply the means to get it, according to lead study author and neuroscientist Gregory Burns. Another, more current view of their behavior, though, is that dogs value human contact in and of itself. A study found that most preferred praise from their owners over the food, or at least they appeared to like both equally. Only two of the dogs were real chow hounds, sharing a strong preference for the food. I actually did a little bit of uh, Googling and uh, web searching for you, and I tracked down some great dog training resources online from Gregory Burns. If you're interested, if you're a dog owner, you might want to check them out. I posted them in my blog for you at uh, DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Just click on my blog. Darren Marlar. You're a very odd man. What does that mean? One more. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. A recent poll says 33% of Americans are happy. Now, how you feel about that statistic, that probably lets you know which category you fall in. Time for today's birthday wrap-up. It's Tuesday, August 1st, celebrating birthdays today from North and Die Hard. Taylor Fry is 35 today. From The Cosby Show, you know her as Vanessa Huxtable, and I believe she's one of the only children in that show that grew up to be somewhat normal. <laughs> Tempest Bledsoe, she's 43 today. From Soap Dish, born on the 4th of July, Rob Camaletti is 52. From The Good Girl, also played Drew's brother Steve on The Drew Carey Show, John Carroll Lynch is 53. And if you're a fan of the cartoon strip Ziggy, well, the cartoonist Tom Wilson is 83 today. Today's question for Question Impossible again, how many words in the English language contain the vowels A, E, I, O, and U in their proper order? Well, if you guessed five words, you were correct. So what are those five words? Well, they are facetious, abstemious, absentious, arsenious, and artericious. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> Ar Arteriasis. Ar Arteri okay, you know what? I, I looked up the words, but I didn't look up the pronunciations. I should have planned that a little bit better. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar, and uh, if you like scary stories, well, I have a, a show that I post up online. Uh, it's called Weird Darkness. If you like paranormal and ghost stories and un unsolved mysteries, that kind of thing, you might like it. It's at WeirdDarkness.com. Well, researchers at the University of Utah, they have noted that humor is one of the best ways to bring a fighting couple back together again. Laughter, it does two, thi it does two key things. 
it breaks the tension, and it's a reminder that you two do have some common ground, since you're both chuckling over the same thing. Well, after a throwdown, text him a link to a goofy YouTube clip with a message like, this may be feel better, hope it does the same for you. In fact, I found a great video that you that you could actually send to your uh, significant other if you're if you're fighting. Um, this is great because it's actually a video about what we all argue about in our marriages. Stupid stuff that we argue about. I posted the the uh, the uh, video in my blog if you want to check it out at darrenmarler.com. Darren Marlar. This is my house. My house. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. Every day that you breathe, you make my life harder. Oh, this is going to be fun. Two guys wanting to celebrate Independence Day? Well, they end up celebrating a moment of duh instead coming up. I'm Darren Marlar. You can hear the show anytime at darrenmarlar.com. You know, even when healthy, some people religiously head to the doctor every year for a physical exam, which is often covered by health insurance. But a review from Danish researchers it concludes that there is very little benefit to such routine exams on healthy people. The researchers analyzed information from 183,000 people who took part in 14 trials carried out in Europe and the United States, and in all the trials, participants were randomly assigned to either receive a routine health check involving screening tests, a physical exam, or advice about lifestyle changes, or not receive one. And results showed that patients who received routine health checks, they were just as likely to die over a nine-year period compared with those who did not receive health checks. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Regardless of what I do, I'm likely to die in the next nine years? How come nobody's reporting that? Stop it, you're scaring me. A new app called the Kissinger is a rubber gadget that attaches to a user's phone to simulate long-distance kissing. With your lover smooching you from another location, the Kissinger mimics a real kiss using pressure sensors and actuators. So now you can actually tell somebody to kiss my grits from across the country and still mean it literally. Nobody ever kissed me the way you do. Two guys wanting to celebrate Independence Day, they end up celebrating a moment of duh instead. I'm Darren Marlar. You know, Independence Day, it, it, it's obviously over, but the stories of true individualism involving fireworks, well, those stories are far from over. From Chicago, Illinois, comes today's moment of duh with James Kowalski and Josh Feynman wanting to celebrate the 4th of July. Well, these two guys, they, they weren't willing to pay the high prices for fireworks, though, so they decided to make some of their own. They filled 10 small balloons with explosive acetylene gas and then planned to ignite them at a party later in the day. Loading up their car to head to the party, they threw the balloons in the back and then slammed the door. Well, a spark ignited the balloons, blowing up the car and throwing James and Josh several feet. Fortunately, they suffered only minor cuts and burns. They can't say the same, though, for the car. Duh. If you hate to exercise, well, you can blame that on your genes. I'm not talking about the denim ones, I'm talking about your parents and your grandparents. Well, I've got some details on that coming your way uh, in just a few minutes, Catch Potatoes. I'm Darren Marlar, and for a few more laughs, if you want a few more after the show, well, you can check out my Daily Dose of Weird News. You can find that at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. i got a new episode every weekday there. Another useless fact. A restaurant in China once paid $75,000 for a giant golden tiger fish because it's believed to be good luck. The fish died during transport. Can you be arrested for driving under the influence even if your car's engine isn't on? Well, that is our Brain on Drug story coming up here in just a bit. I'm Darren Marlar. If you'd like to be a part of the show, well, why don't you drop me an email? You can do that by visiting DarrenMarlar.com and then click on the radio show page to find my email address. That's DarrenMarlar.com, D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com, and then click on the radio show page. Well, you can blame it on your mother and father, and, you know, and for that matter, your grandparents. If you, if you hate to exercise, it could be in your genes, specifically genes that modulate the dopamine, that, that feel-good chemical in your brain. It appears to play a role in our propensity to embrace or avoid exercise, according to researchers. 
Uh, you just gotta look at any group of people to know that some exercise frequently, others prefer the couch. Raise your hands if you're in the latter. Yep, me, <laughs> me too. Well, now it appears that the, uh, the part of the brain that drives rewards and the part of the brain that drives the motor system they are, uh, are interacting, causing some of us uh, to want to run a marathon and leading others to binge watch Game of Thrones. So the translation here is gym rats, they get a rush from working out as dopamine levels soar, while couch potatoes like me, we appear to have a genetic makeup that interferes with the release of dopamine. So thanks a lot, Grandma. Dude, listen, listen, listen. listen. What's your name? Jaron Marler. I'm going to make him stay here. The Jaron Marler Radio Show. I have no faith in this at all. Elementary school students in Marion County, Florida will have more free time after school this year as the school district implements a controversial homework ban. Uh, apparently, the goal is to eventually make Florida's main export fast food workers. Have you ever wanted to speak another language? Well, now you can with the new language course everyone is talking about. Yes, you too can learn how to speak drive through window with the Burmitz drive through window language course. In only a matter of weeks, you'll be speaking and understanding conversational drive through like a pimple-faced, ill-mannered adolescent. So wherever you go in the world, you can converse in the international language of drive through window. Just listen. Can I take your order? Repeat. Can I take your order? The drive through window language course. Available now for only... Or you can supersize today for only... This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> so, can you be arrested for driving under the influence, even if your car's engine wasn't on? Well, two women who took turns steering a broken-down vehicle they faced drunk driving charges after their slow-moving car crashed into a parked car. Kayleen Kesey of Gary, Indiana was pushing this disabled car while Melissa Friedenberg steered from the passenger seat. The two were moving the car into a parking lot at a nearby motel and they were spotted by police. While both women had blood alcohol levels of 0.17 percent – wow, that is more than twice the state's legal limit to drive. Authorities said the women were operating the vehicle while intoxicated, even though the car's engine wasn't working. The prosecutor acknowledged the charges could be difficult to prosecute in court. According to Deputy Prosecutor Adam Burroughs, who authorized the charges, the statute and case law supports a DUI charge, but it will be interesting to see. Burroughs said that the office had prosecuted drunk drivers who were stopped in restaurant drive through lanes or who were on private property. Bicycles and motorized wheelchairs are about the only vehicles in which a person would be unlikely to face a drunk driving charge, he said. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? A report says the obesity epidemic is affecting 711 million people worldwide. Ah, 711, there's that number again. Hey, who's in the mood for a cherry slurpee and a nacho cheese covered hot dog? They're fun loving, they're fearless. The movie that defies the forces of gravity and good taste. Hot Dog, the movie. Flipping, turning, so kiss your buns goodbye. It's Hot Dog, the movie. If you'd like to keep up with everything I do, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's absolutely free. You can find the Marler Sheet at DarrenMarler.com. D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, if one of your excuses for not going to the gym is that weightlifting and treadmills are boring, well, it looks like you're going to have to come up with a new way to weasel out of that. Now that they have to compete with dance studios and adult sports leagues, gyms are coming up with creative new ways to get fit. Classes like Karaoke Spin, Pogo Boot Camp, and Stiletto Strength are among the latest gym crazes. Among the benefits of taking different classes is that you work muscles that may not get a regular workout and you help avoid the so-called plateau that people get when they do the same workout over and over. Plus, working out with others builds camaraderie, making it easier to stick with. Now, for me personally, I don't work out because, well, it makes me tired. What do you want to be when you grow up? Darren Marlar. I think he's cool. cool. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. Final.
only a connection to the real world. This could be the beginning. You feel it? Feel it? Feel if you want to like me, poke me, tweet me, follow me, stalk me, you can find links to all of my uh, my social media at DarrenMarler.com. That's me. I'm Darren Marler. And uh, Arizona, it has a new concept regarding executions. An idea that one lethal injection expert calls unprecedented, wholly novel, and frankly absurd. The Arizona Department of Corrections it has uh, it's had a lot of problems acquiring the standard execution drugs, uh, p uh, pentobarbital and theopental. So they're suggesting that lawyers provide the drugs to be used to kill their own clients. Can you believe that? Well, not only is this obviously unethical, but the plan is legally impossible. The makers of, of uh, pentobarbital, they won't allow the drug to be used in executions, and theopental, it's not sold in the United States, and it can't be imported. Uh, you're, you're all acting like, like lethal injection is the only way to kill somebody, though. I mean, there are other options that are a lot easier in, if you want to execute somebody. I mean, there's the shooting squad, hanging, guillotine, my personal favorite, binge watching The View. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Hit it, sweetheart.